Hi, Al Williams with Hackaday here. I wanted to show you how to use XPRA to export applications to a web browser remotely. It's pretty interesting. You can get an application to just run inside of a modern web browser. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a bash shell here into my local machine, and I'm going to set up an SSH tunnel to a remote host. Now, you don't actually have to do that, but I didn't really want that port open on my remote host for just anybody to connect into and run applications. So I'm going to run an SSH session and create a local tunnel. And so there's the command. It's SSH with an AWC is the shortcut for my host name. So that's not only the IP address, but it's also got the certificate, so I don't need a password. I'm using version 4 of TCP IP. And then the dash L is the local port forward. The local port is 2000. And it gets a little confusing. The back part is telling me to, on the remote side, to use port 9876 on the local host on the remote side. So that's actually the remote box, even though it says local host. So when you hit 2000 on my box, it's going to hit port 9876 on the remote box. And it'll go through SSH, so it'll be encrypted. And not just anybody could do it. You have to be logged in through SSH to do that. Now, the port numbers are kind of arbitrary. Ports below 1,024, you have to be root to set up, and we're not root today. So I just arbitrarily picked those numbers. So there's my usual login. I'll leave it to your imagination how to display the Hackaday RSS feed on your login. And the next step is I've got to run the XPRA server. And that command line has a lot of options on it. Luckily, most of them you don't normally need. And what you'll see is it's going to bind to a arbitrary interface, any address, 9876. That's the same port we used in the tunnel. We're turning on the web server with the HTML on, and we're going to start an X term just because that'll let us launch other things and experiment. Now, the 9876 is behind a firewall, so if you just went to the remote server after I ran this and tried to hit that port, it would be blocked. The only way we can get to it is by bypassing the firewall, and we're doing that with the SSH tunnel. Now, there's other ways you could do this security-wise, and I'll talk about those in the post, but this was the most convenient for here. It'll also go into the background, but you can stop that for debugging. I didn't in this case. And you can see the log file. If you wanted to go and troubleshoot, you can take a look in the log file. It'll kind of tell you where things are. Now, I'm going to go over to the web browser back on my local machine, and I'm going to navigate to port 2000 because that's the local end of the tunnel. And in just a second, I'll go ahead and make this full screen. You'll see there's our X term. And the performance is actually not bad. Uh, let me start a clock up here. And you'll see it's a little clipped. That's because the title bar has wrapped around. But if you make the window bigger so that the title bar doesn't wrap around, it'll actually display correctly. It's a little hard to grab that handle there. There you go. So now it looks okay. And the interesting thing is, is if I go in and close this out, and then some other time go hit that server again, even if it was from another machine, I'll get the same session back again. And the performance really is good. If I tried to run, say, the GUI Emacs through an SSH X11 forward, you know, with the dash X or dash Y, it would be intolerably slow. And if you notice, it just popped right up here, and you can just do the normal things that you would do inside of Emacs. Uh, this is pretty easy to set up, and like I say, the performance is quite good. The set persistent sessions are something like you get in VNC or, or NX. Uh, it's very small compared to some of those solutions and you know the security is relatively good in this particular case if i had people on the other machine the remote machine then they could all get to that socket that probably wouldn't be very secure in this case that's not a problem but there are other ways to set it up where you'd have to authenticate and do that in a pretty smart way And you can look in the post and in the documentation for that
And then when you want to shut it down, you can just go back into the terminal. And type in XPRA stop. That'll shut the server down. There's a lot of command line options available, and you'll just have to take a look at the documentation. Like I say, most of them not always useful for the common cases, but there are plenty of them. So I just wanted to give you a quick demo of uh, how all that worked, and thanks for watching.